Hello, this is Sign Out here, and today we'll be taking a look at all the Blu-rays and DVDs that I picked up between April and June of 2022. It's Morphin' Time! Alright, we're going to start with things that already have their own videos. Uh, specifically, Superior Ultra Brothers, Ultra 7X, these came up in a recent Mill Creek Ultraman video. And Ultraman Mabius got its own video. So if you haven't seen those, go check them out. I'm not going to talk about these otherwise, because I've already talked about them enough. This quarter, I also picked up Batman Long Halloween Part 1 and Part 2 on a standard edition with slipcovers for a lot of reasons. And go check out the DC Movie Spine Art video if you haven't, because that one will kind of cover why I ended up buying these movies a second time. And apparently, I've been hearing that maybe in September, the Deluxe Edition 4K with both included will be coming. So more to come on the DC Movie Spine Art front in the future. So rounding out updates, uh, I finally have an update on the Ghostbusters Ultimate Collection. In the last Blu-ray haul and in the previous video, I had mentioned that I had put in for Sony to replace the duplicated disc that was in my set, and it finally happened. I got a mysterious tracking number from uh, SPHE, so Sony Pictures Home Entertainment, and then this showed up in a bubble mailer, which I was like, that's weird, but it's essentially just the cardboard slip for the special features, but there is my Ghostbusters 4K disc with the HDR, because the uh, one in the box set is different. So I think it's finally time to get this set properly fixed up, relegated back to how it should be. Let's pull out, you know, the good old Ghostbusters uh, case here. Pop it open. Let's get that second Ghostbusters 2 disc out. And let's put in the proper Ghostbusters 1 4K. So now my set is finally complete. So I'm glad that Sony, you know, actually went through and did all the replacements. Now, if they could only just reprint this set, because not nearly enough people were able to get this, and it honestly should get reprinted, you know, if it's not in the fancy Ghost Trap box, at least in a regular case for those bonus features. But at least for me, the saga with this set is concluded. All right, so this quarter's haul, let's look at anime. I, I love anime. I really do, but very specifically. i very specific with my anime. Um, I'm going to stop spoiling what's coming up. Let's look at these. So first of all, Loop on the Third, Episode Zero, First Contact. This was a TV special. This is TV Special 14 from 2002. And this is essentially an origin story, uh, which is pretty neat. And it does have an English dub with the Tony Oliver and Friends cast for Lupin. Pretty great. Uh, it's a really neat special. And, of course, Discotech, like always, just killed it with this release. Excellent stuff as usual. Uh, really happy to see how much Lupin we've gotten now on disc. And it still keeps going. In fact, the next thing in the stack... Uh, we got Lupin the Third Part One. This is the first 23 episodes, or all 23 episodes of the original Lupin series. No pilot film. There was some licensing restriction there, but this is fully remastered in HD, uh, which is a new remaster. It's not the Japanese Blu-ray, and there is an English dub uh, again with the Tony Oliver cast. Also, alternate slip cover, uh, alternate interior art. Always love to see that. It's got more of a classic Lupin, whereas this is more modern Lupin art style. But really great. I've looked through this. I haven't watched through it all the way yet. Dub is pretty solid. It's that classic show in the best quality it's probably ever going to look. And you really can't go wrong. Now, this is uh, Lupin Part 1. We have Part 3, Part 4, Part 5 from Discotech. Uh, part 2 was released on DVD. And that is a very, very long show. And if it does ever get released on Blu-ray, I'm absolutely picking it up 100%. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And I think Sentai Filmworks is probably putting out Part 6 because of their uh, licensing deal. Darkstalkers, the complete OVA collection. This is the second time I talk about Darkstalkers on the channel this week because I live stream the games on Monday. Darkstalkers is having a little bit of a resurgence, at least in the nature of, hey, let's get the original content of Darkstalkers back out there in the best quality possible. And this is absolutely the case here. Now, Discotech did do the DVD release years ago, uh, but this Blu-ray is just an absolute upgrade. They did a lot of really great work. It looks incredible. It sounds incredible. It's got all kinds of different audio track options, Japanese, English, new subtitle translation, uh, music and effects track, which is just the music and sound effects, and it's all on one nice, beautiful Blu-ray. If you ever wanted to own the Darkstalkers OVA, the best way to do it is with the Discotech Blu-ray, and I'm super duper happy about this. I love Darkstalkers so much, and I'm just really glad to have the anime in its proper full HD fashion. 
Here's a cute little anime called Heart and Yumi, uh, also known as, uh, I forgot what the actual like Japanese title was, because um, I think they couldn't license that one. Anyways, it's um, it's cute. It's about, like, there's like a Tyrannosaurus and this little baby dinosaur. There's also a limited edition. Uh, they've done some limited print runs on stuff. They're specifically numbering them, uh, so I have 1583 out of 2000 for Heart and Yumi. I think this officially street dates for July, but I already got it because right stuff shifted early. It looks adorable. It's about dinosaurs. It's based on children's, uh, you know, children's books. Uh, you got the Heart and You Mate uh, 2010 film, the Adventure of Toronto Boy 2015 film, the 20 episode TV series. And it's adorable and it's like $20. Uh, I thought, you know what? This looks sweet. This looks fun. I want to watch it. And sometimes, you know, and th this is the dichotomy of me as a person, is you go from like dark stalkers to cute dinosaur stuff. And then this is an anime, but it's still discotheque, so that's why it's in this segment. Straight Sharks Complete Series, uh, all 40 episodes on a standard definition Blu-ray. I checked a look at it. Surprisingly, for being a show from the early 1990s, uh, Straight Sharks looks really good on disc. They don't think they did any too much touch-up on this. I think it's pretty much just, here's what we got, and they tossed it in. But yeah, no, Straight Sharks, the entire show, one Blu-ray disc, looks pretty great. Uh, actually pretty impressed. I, I'm not entirely certain why I bought Street Sharks, because I didn't have any, like, attachment to it, but I knew of it, and I was like, well, that Blu-ray looks good. So, pretty cool. That's the discotheque part of the anime part of this video. So, for some non-discotheque anime stuff, uh, here we've got SSSS Dynazenon from the Gridman Universe, my favorite of the Gridman Universe shows, and I can say that now, because I've watched all of Gridman, all of SSSS Gridman twice, uh, Japanese and English, and I'm currently watching the English dub for Dino Zenon after watching it in Japanese. I love this show. Uh, I absolutely do. It's it's very character-focused, and I love character-focused stuff. Uh, Funimation, and I can say that this is the last... I think this is the last time I'm going to get something that's branded Funimation before it switches to Crunchyroll branding. Funimation did release this. Uh, it is the entire show. It's got textless opening and endings. That's about it. Nothing too fancy. Uh, sadly, no Grid Knight fight. Still wish that got released officially somewhere. Inner art, uh, it, well, this is a reversible cover, but it is nice to get the character artwork there, as well as Dinah Zenon's head. And then uh, inside is a wonderful uh, Funimation digital copy code that I can't redeem because it keeps telling me the website's down. Because they switched over to Crunchyroll before this thing got released. And the disc art is nice. It could have gone generic, but they got a nice shot of Galma here, and a nice shot of the floating building that started this all. So pretty cool. Uh, really nice release overall. It pairs well with the Gridman. Uh, even though this didn't get a special edition like Gridman did, which it had. Again, favorite Gridman show. But it is nice to have uh, Dino Zen on, nonetheless. Here we have the Lady Death animated movie. Uh, this was released by ADV Films on Blu-ray. Right Stuff still had it. Uh, my dad's a fan of Lady Death, so that's why I picked it up. Uh, and it was actually not too badly priced, but it put free shipping onto a Right Stuff order. Surprisingly, yeah, something ADV put out. It's still kicking around in the stock room, but Hey, that's neat. All right, uh, this is a weird little story. Uh, first of all, I would advise uh, anyone looking at this video going, hey, they released Ghost in the Cell Santa Claus Complex on Blu-ray. Yeah, they did, but it's problematic. Uh, so these releases for Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, and Second Gig are in fact complete series sets. Uh, you get the entire 26 episodes right here on four, four Blu-rays, uh, even if they tend to fall out. These were released by a company named Anchor Bay Entertainment. Uh, for some reason, the Bandai Entertainment logo is still on there, even though this came out years after they died. Manga UK was involved. And these are two sets that contain the entire 26 episodes of each show, so 52 in total. These uh, used to go for like $40, $45, $50 dollars a set, which is ridiculous because these are bad. Uh, why are these bad? First of all, the there is no subtitles for the Japanese version. It's English closed captioning that you can turn on while watching the Japanese audio. That sucks. That's that's bad. Uh, the bonus feature content I think is pretty much non-existent. I don't not even clean openings and endings. There's no chapter markers, so if you want to skip the intro and you hit the next chapter, it's going to skip the whole episode. Uh, what else? Oh, the Japanese audio randomly cuts in for a couple seconds on several episodes in both sets which is just terrible, and Anchor Bay's never addressed any of this. The reason why I own these, because you're probably wondering, wait, why are they so terrible, why'd you buy them? I do want, I did want to own Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex on Blu-ray. The visual quality is good, and the audio quality is pretty good. 
It's just, you know, a lot of the features like subtitles are bad. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't have ever paid 40 to 50 bucks a set for these. This is ridiculous. I found these at a Walmart for $12.96 a piece. Yeah, 26 bucks for the whole standalone complex on a mediocre Blu-ray release? I'll take it. Uh, things I do for collection. But if you're looking for these and you can't find them for under 20 bucks a set, don't even bother. Because they're not good enough for that. But under 20 yeah, it's not too bad if you like the English dub. If you don't like the English dub, look elsewhere because that is not going to satisfy you. But that's it for anime in this video. Speaking of varying quality, uh, let's do the RoboCop section. It's weird, we got two RoboCop releases in the same uh, quarter, but we have one of the greatest Blu-ray releases ever and one of the worst right next to each other from two different companies. So let's talk about the good. Uh, first of all, Arrow Video took their already amazing RoboCop Blu-ray, which was already a 4K transfer, upgraded it to a 4K disc. This contains the director's cut, the TV cut, the theatrical cut, every other cut of the movie, including comparisons. It comes with a sticker that says this property is protected by RoboCop. You've got art cards or lobby card recreations, which have famous scenes from the movie. This is a really cool shot with the shadow. Uh, really cool stuff. I love Arrow Video's releases. I think I talked about their American Werewolf in London one very highly last time. Uh, also on the back, it does have one of the posters which I always really like that one. Uh, this is a great, great classic film that is a absolute masterpiece in filmmaking, and it has been given an absolute proper 4K release that looks incredible. Definitely an upgrade from the Blu-ray. In case you're wondering how bonus features should be, that's all the bonus features. Uh, it's, it's almost too much to read, so I'm just gonna let you pause and read if you want. There is so much on this. I watched through all of it. It will take you seven, eight, nine hours. It's incredible stuff. Absolutely amazing. And then to top it off, this limited edition came with a poster, which is a poster art of the outer sleeve, and then a book, which contains pictures from filming, behind the scenes things, essays, information. I read through all of this. It's all very, very great. If you're looking for the limited edition 4K for RoboCop, absolutely a hundred percent hundred times worth it absolutely recommended pick this up if you love this movie and there is a blu-ray release as well as long as you get the two disc edition you're gonna have everything it's it's fantastic absolutely stellar release from arrow video amazing all right so let's talk about liberation hall's robocop the series blu-ray First of all, no one in their right mind should be releasing RoboCop the series on disc, let alone Blu-ray. It is not well regarded, and I don't think it was kept in great condition. This Blu-ray, despite being called Blu-ray, despite advertising, oh, it's a new transfer. This is absolutely like a VHS or DVD rip of the show that is put onto Blu-ray discs. Badly. Because, being a show that aired shortly after RoboCop 3... It should not be in widescreen 16x9. It is 100% should be in 4x3. Here's where it gets fun. So there was two releases. There was a Blu-ray and a DVD. The DVD is in the proper original 4x3. The Blu-ray is in 16x9 widescreen. Duh. What are you even doing? Also, Liberation Hall, this is their first uh, home media release for video. They've pretty much done music before, so they clearly didn't know what they were doing. Uh, also... The thing is, if you get the DVD release as the proper aspect ratio, the video quality has a lot of transfer problems and glitches out several times. So ultimately what I'm telling you is don't buy either. Um, I have the Blu-ray because I pre-ordered it because I was like, oh my god, someone made RoboCop the series on Blu-ray. It sucks. Uh, if you're going to hit this for collection purposes, then get it. If not, I wouldn't bother. Uh, it's not great, and I don't recommend the DVD either because of the video problems. On top of that, if you may notice, there is all these things that say featurette on them, but behind the scenes featurette is the only one that's a video feature. The photo gallery, all the cast profiles, feature law enforcement, all these say featurette, they're all text. I don't mind text bonus features, it just looks a little deceptive like there's a bunch of video content, but there isn't. So at the end of the day, if you're a Robocop fan, uh, if you're a hard hardcore Robocop fan, I guess buy this for a collection purpose. This Aero Video 4K Blu-ray, fantastic, amazing, wonderful, get it if you can get it. 
don't get that under any circumstance. Honestly, unless you're just trying to get a completionism thing going on, which is my problem, it's not worth buying. End of the story. Before we move into the biggest category of this haul video, let's look at just everything else that doesn't fit in other categories, which is mostly movies. First of all, The Captain's Collection, uh, Explorations by William Shatner, Special Edition, was a Shout Factory website exclusive release that came out, I think, late 2020, and I completely didn't even know this happened. I found out about it because it was in the uh, it was on a sale. Anyways, The Captain's Collection is a collection of all of the documentaries William Shatner produced with Shout Factory about Star Trek. So it's got The Captains, it's got The Captains Close Up, which is an additional version of The Captains. The Captains is essentially him interviewing The Captains. The Captains Close Up has him interviewing other people. It's got Chaos on the Bridge, which is the chaotic story of the first two seasons of The Next Generation. Absolutely wonderful documentary. Get a Life, which is William Shatner's tribute to the Star Trek fandom. And if you buy the exclusive special edition from Shout Factory's website, you get a special features disc that contains a whole lot of additional interviews, including full interview segments of people that were interviewed for previous uh, documentaries. So really great set if you like those documentaries. Uh, I do, and especially Chaos on the Bridge is probably my favorite. So I really, really wanted to pick this up. And then when I found out about it, I jumped on it because I was like, I want this, especially with the bonus disc. I still need to pick up uh, What We Leave Behind, the DS9 documentary, mostly because I need to finish watching DS9 first. But Shout Factory's documentaries that they produced uh, for Trek um, and released for Trek, like with uh, What We Leave Behind was not produced by William Shatner or Shout. It was just released by them. But these were great, and I'm glad to have this nice collection of them uh, to go along with my Star Trek stuff. Because, yeah, great documentaries for a great franchise. Speaking of great franchises, here's the Spider-Man No Way Home Steelbook. Uh, this was the Best Buy exclusive. I really love the cover art on this, considering it's got Spider-Man in the middle. You got Doc Ock and, you know, his tentacles. It's got this mind-bending thing with the strange magic circle, Green Goblin, Electro. Pretty great. On the back, uh, it has Doctor Strange, so you do have a wraparound art cover, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, I, I really do like it. Uh, topping it all off, uh, the discs on the inside, for whatever reason, they put Doc Ock on the Ultra HD uh, disc, and then they put Spider-Man on the uh, Blu-ray disc. But and we can take a look at the inner art, because it is a steel book. Let me pull this paper out of the way. Uh, it, it's not much, but it's there. Uh, still kind of surprised that they hadn't released a set that included, like, all of the Toby movies, all the Andrew movies, and all the Tom Holland movies. And then they announced that No Way Home is getting some weird extended cut for theaters, and I thought, ah, watching Christmas, they do, like, a, what would that be, a, an eight-pack of movies? Anyways, we'll see what happens. But for now, a very nice release of it, though uh, they took the deleted scenes off after soliciting deleted scenes because they wanted to shove them into a theatrical re-release because that's Sony for you. That being said, still a nice Blu-ray of an excellent Spider-Man movie. Speaking of movies, uh, here is the Matrix 4 film Deja Vu collection. Love that title for a collection. Love this cover art too. You've got like the main trinity of characters, including Trinity, Neo, and Morpheus, and then you got kind of the shadow of bearded Keanu from Matrix Resurrections. Now, unfortunately, this set is not a complete Matrix experience, because if you do want all of the bonus features and the Animatrix, you actually need the previous uh, Blu-ray, which I should have brought out. Hold on, I'll grab it. Here it is. This is the Ultimate Matrix Collection. Uh, so this was released. This is a Blu-ray upgrade of a DVD set that was specifically designed to be all the movies. Uh, so this set contained... Uh, it had, had the Matrix, right? The original. It had uh, Reloaded. It had Revolutions. And it had the Animatrix, which is still my favorite uh, Matrix movie. And then it had this bonus disc, which has the uh, the Burly Man Chronicles, the Roots of the Matrix, and the Zion Archive. And I believe these are DVDs. Uh, I remember one of these cases being broken, so I'm going to be careful. Yeah, these are DVDs, including on <laughs> dual-sided. Uh, so this Matrix experience stuff was really great. Uh, the Animatrix is fantastic. And then each of these Blu-rays contained extra bonus features. So uh, unfortunately, the Matrix Deja Vu collection which, while it does look nice, and it is 4K, uh, there is a minor issue with it, and that is the um, actual Blu-rays in here. You got the 4K of Matrix and Reloaded, Revolutions, Resurrections, and then you got the actual Blu-rays, which contains some of the bonus features, but you don't get any of the bonus features from 
the Matrix experience, which is a lot of the bonus features for these movies. And then you also don't get the Animatrix. And I understand that the Animatrix doesn't have a 4K, and this is mostly a 4K Blu-ray combo pack, but again, would have been nice to have a more complete set. As is, though, if you are trying to upgrade your previous Matrix films to a, you know, of the original trilogy, if you didn't get the previous 4K releases, it's a good way to get those, along with Resurrections, and that was why I wanted it. And the set retails for about 80, I think $85, which isn't horrible for four uh, 4K movies in a collection, but since I already had some of them on Blu-ray, again, the 4K transfers are a bit nicer. These are my, this is how I have to do my Matrix stuff. It's like 4K here, bonus features here, and Animatrix. Um, it would have been nice if the Animatrix was at least tossed in as a bonus Blu-ray disc, but alas, it is still two sets, and that's just what we have to work with. Uh, this normally goes for 85 bucks, like I said, I got it on sale for 60. Uh, in fact, Amazon had it for 60. I took the Amazon page into Best Buy and said, hey, can you give it to me for 60? And they're like, sure. And they price matched and there we go. So it is nice to have the Matrix movies on 4K. It does complement my Blu-ray set and it does look nice together, but it just would have been nice if this could have been just one set all together. But ultimately, that's just how the 4K life has been. Speaking of 4K, uh, Smoking the Bandit, classic Burt Reynolds movie. Uh, this one, I think they're doing a Fathom event for this, and my parents were like, oh, we should go see it. And then the ticket price is like $25 a ticket, which is way higher than usual Fathom event prices. And I was like, I can get the 4K for 18 bucks. So we got the 4K for 18 bucks. My parents also love Grease, uh, so I picked this up for them. Uh, this is honestly a really fantastic transfer. Uh, Paramount's been doing... Uh, yeah, it's Paramount. Paramount's been doing these uh, crazy magical film transfers where they look just absolutely incredible on 4K, and this one is no different. So keep it up, Paramount, and you're doing good. Criterion Collections Princess Bride surprisingly did not have Princess Bride on Blu-ray. Uh, found out about this edition, which is a little bit of a storybook, uh, and it just looks really nice. So it's got the little booklet. Uh, it comes with, you know, cast and credit stuff. It's formatted like a storybook, but it does talk about the movie itself, and then the movie exists on Blu-ray. Uh, there is a little paper insert that would tell you about the bonus features, if I could find it. I put it in here somewhere. There it is. Uh, and this, basically, you know, here's your Blu-ray uh, special edition features. It is a 4K restoration, but they haven't done a 4K edition of this because Criterion was pretty slow to the 4K game. But it is pretty nice. I like the book style, and maybe a 4K release wouldn't do the book style. But it is pretty good. Looks pretty nice on a shelf. And I always like, you know, it's like if it's based on a storybook like this, uh, Labyrinth I have a, in a book style too. Works better that way for me. Um, but yeah, love The Princess Bride. I made a video about some of the figures uh, this year. So if you haven't checked that out, go look at that. But honestly, great movie and a great release. Speaking of movies that have aged well, the Scooby-Doo live action movies honestly have aged pretty good. I watched them on HBO Max recently and I ended up picking up... Um, one of this. I, it's a two-pack. They're not like, you know, crazy. Like, they don't have that many bonus features, but they do have bonus features. They're early Warner Brothers Blu-rays. They pretty much just stuck the discs onto discs, or the movies onto discs. Also, they're like transparent. Uh, this is a thing Warner Brothers did with some of their early releases. They were literally transparent. Like, it almost looks like there's nothing on the discs, but there are. Uh, kind of cool. Kind of ghostly. Kind of goes with Scooby-Doo stuff. Um, yeah, you either love them or hate them, but Scooby-Doo movies on Blu-ray. Can't go wrong with that for me. And then lastly, we have The Addams Family 2, because um, I forgot this came out. This came out while I was gone at Disneyland, and that's why I forgot it came out. Uh, I did like the first Addams Family animated movie a whole lot. I like The Addams Family in general, uh, which I guess you could have guessed from my whole vibe of, oh, here's my horror stuff that's not like slasher horror, but like monster horror. Anyways, uh, Addams Family 2. Haven't seen it yet, but I'm planning to soon. It's basically just the movie, and then it's got three tiny little uh, bonus features that probably amount to nothing about the actual film production, and that's why you know we've degraded as a society. But still, it's Adam's Family 2 on Blu-ray. I'll watch it at some point. Uh, I enjoy these type of things. And now we go on to the big chunk of things, because Target was having a buy two, get one free sale, and I needed to catch up on some DC Blu-rays. First things first, new DC releases. Uh, Teen Titans Go! and DC Superhero Girls Mayhem in the Multiverse a.k.a. Teen Titans Go! and DC Superhero Girls in the most misleading title of all time, which actually is a joke in the movie. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I actually like the way this movie turned out. If it was a Teen Titans Go! DC Superhero Girls crossover, it would have been cool, but ultimately this movie was the Teen Titans cameo in a DC Superhero Girls movie. 
And DC Superior Girls is actually a pretty good show, honestly. Um, it does take a lot of liberties with the DC universe and mythology, but overall as a show, it's pretty good. And this movie is pretty good. It's actually a dramatic storytelling uh, narrative, and the Teen Titans help with that. And they kind of comment on the fact that they're barely in a crossover, that they're double billed on. And that's honestly my best review of the movie. So, if you haven't seen it, uh, if you like the DC Superhero Girls show, check it out. If you don't, uh, it's a good primer, if you see if you have never seen the show. If you hate the show, you probably won't like the movie, but hey, it's a fun thing. That being said, it does say uh, bonus Teen Titans Go and DC Superhero Girls episodes, but they're not the crossovers from in Teen Titans Go with the DC Superhero Girls. Bad. You should have had the crossovers in here. Speaking of crossovers, here is the uh, Constantine House of Mystery Blu-ray. I don't know if I mentioned this in the DC Spine Art, but this is a collection of animated shorts, including Constantine House of Mystery, which is a sequel to the DC animated movie universe, and three extra shorts, which are the Commandi, uh, Losers, and Blue Beetle ones that were already on previous movies, plus a neat little bonus feature. Nothing fancy. It goes with the collection. Here we have The Batman, uh, which is, I think, still my favorite movie of the year. Uh, I've watched it three times now, which, considering it's a three-hour movie, is kind of nuts. This is the Steelbook release that Best Buy put out, looking absolutely gorgeous. I love the rain, love the question mark symbol around Batman's head, looking awesome. Uh, inside, we've got a disc for the Blu-ray and a disc for the special features, and there actually is like two and a half hours worth of bonus features. It's great. There's even a bonus feature that specifically breaks down the timeline of the movie when they were shooting it, like from pre-production to, to full production, including like their shutdowns for COVID and everything. Fascinating stuff. Uh, really cool to see that. And then uh, over here, we've got the 4K disc, which is pretty much just the movie, but that's honestly fine. Um, and then in the back of all this is pretty simple, but pretty on brand to the Batman. Pretty cool stuff for a pretty cool movie. So like I said, it was time to catch up with stuff for DC. Uh, first things first, didn't own this. Keanu Reeves uh, starring in a Constantine film, which is John Constantine. Keanu is not blonde. He is not British. He certainly tried, though. Uh, this movie's interesting, and I think it actually... It works as one of those things where it's a movie... It works as a movie, not as much as a adaptation of John Constantine. That sort of thing. Um, by the way, look at all those bonus features. I, I don't know if I'll ever watch all of these, but there's a bunch of bonus features, more than we get nowadays. I, I really think that it's a shame what we get now on, on movies compared to how we used to. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's also, you can tell it's an early Warner Brothers Blu-ray because it's clear, just like Scooby-Doo. It looks good. Uh, it's fine. It's serviceable. It goes in the collection. Now, now it's there. And then we have uh, Superman and Lois, the complete first season on Blu-ray because I need to catch up on my TV releases. Still waiting to watch season two when it hits HBO Max, but they keep taking forever to actually air the show. What's nice here is you do get actual bonus features, including a TV special, a DC FanDome panel, and a couple other little uh, featurettes. But other than that, uh, a lot of these Warner Brothers TV releases are really nice because they have these slip boxes that you put the case in, and it looks really good. Um, so here's the thing. You're probably wondering why is this a whole other segment. Uh, I'm going to bring in the other TV releases. So here we have the complete second season of Batwoman. Uh, I have not watched season two yet. I'm super behind on all these shows, but hey, Target's doing a buy to get one, and it lets me clear out uh, backlog for collecting things, and I can watch them later. Works for me. So Batwoman season two, you know, pretty cool. It's got a couple bonus features, some deleted scenes, gag reel, that sort of thing. Goes alongside the season one set, pretty good. Uh, and you can see that they have kind of a consistent look to their spines. Uh, season two is in a smaller case because it doesn't have the crisis bonus disc that season one did. That's fine. They look like a nice, consistent set. If you have an idea of where I'm going with this, leave it in the comments. Here's Stargirl season two. Uh, I also need to finish watching this. I got tired of dealing with the CW app and HBO Max keeps crashing. Minor bonus features. Uh, here's season one. So you see they go together. Really nice, consistent packaging. Oh, I think you all know where I'm going with this one. Here's the fourth and final season of Black Lightning, a Warner Archive release. Uh, wanted to get this to kind of finish off the set. It does have a couple little bonus features. One of them's a DC FanDome panel. And that matches pretty good with Black Lightning Season 3, which was Warner Archive, and Black Lightning Season 2, which was Warner Archive, and Season 1, which was Retail. thought it was really weird how they, they downgraded Black Lightning from Retail to Warner Archive, when other shows that I think were less popular still got to be Retail. Kind of kind of dumb. But overall, I mean, it's mostly consistent, outside of Warner Brothers changing their logo and 
you know, this being, you know, oh, hold on, let's, let's, let's just, let's toss that out of the side. See, yeah, they line up pretty good, pretty good overall. Another show I haven't watched in years, Legends of Tomorrow, season six. Kind of a neat little faux uh, VHS tape box. Again, bonus features, actual bonus features. And when you put it with the rest of the Legends sets, it doesn't look out of place because every season's been a different color. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Also, you can tell when this show stopped being a superhero show and started becoming a wacky time travel show. Right there. Right there is when it happened. Do I even need to say that I've been behind on shows? Anyways, Season 7 of The Flash. Honestly, probably one of the cooler cover arts they've had. It's not just floating heads, but floating half bodies. Uh, yeah, see? Really cool. I like how the spine art continues from the front art. Bonus features. Here it is next to the other six seasons of The Flash. Where you can see, hey, the logo is the same place. Uh, it's you know it's gotten a little smaller down here. Uh, kind of weird how it did two black seasons, two red seasons, two black seasons, one continued art from the front season. Uh, I think actually, yeah, because you see, with the first four seasons and five in five, the first five seasons, they just kind of hard cut at the edge, whereas season six and seven went with a wraparound. But you know, not not too bad, not too bad. And then lastly, we have the sixth and final season of Supergirl. Probably the... I don't know. This is, I actually have finished Supergirl. Really liked this show. Thought it stayed pretty consistent overall. It had a... I think there was one season that dipped in quality a little bit, but I think it really built itself up and made something special and ended on a high note. I did like season six quite a bit. Really nice packaging. I do like this, uh, you know, darker purple uh, pink color scheme. Here's my problem. Okay, and look, this is going to seem really petty, but... Come on, it, it's me. We, we know this. Uh, yeah, when you start lining it up with the other Supergirl sets, you realize that all of them did the uh, red spine with a little blue banner around the Blu-ray logo thing until the final one. Not to mention, I know this is because of the show changing networks, the logo changed. And I know it's because the logo changed in show, the logo changed. But then it went back again. If this matched that, I, it would have been a little less weird, but like... Slightly annoyed that the last season of Supergirl isn't a red banner when they really stuck to it. This was the most consistent out of any of the DC TV shows, and then season six ruined it. Also on the top, because see, randomly season four was still blue on the top, but uh, yeah. So I mean, when you're looking at the covers, they're all different colors and stuff. That's fine. It's just on the spines. They were so, they're doing so good. They were doing so good until the very end. In case anyone was curious, here is all of my like, post aero DC TV stuff. Uh, it, I have a little side cabinet where I keep Blu-rays because I don't have all the shelves that I really want to put everything up on nice shelves. But, you know, this is basically everything after Arrow. It's in a specific order uh, from Arrow to Vixen here. That's Earth Prime, uh, as we know it from post-crisis. And then Doom Patrol through Titans or through Watchmen are all alternate universe stuff uh, from that same era. So you can see that even though there is some inconsistencies like that Supergirl, they do look nice together because they are for the most part, uh, minus some of them not having slip covers like the Warner Archives for Black Lightning, Constantine, Pennyworth. They they do look nice. Uh, I also have Lucifer, which I guess could also be kind of put in here. It's, you know, Vertigo. But when it comes down to it, I do like that they all have kind of a consistent look to them for the most part. So that does it for this Blu-ray haul for April, May, and June. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment down below, tell me anything that was your favorite release in this batch, or ask me any questions you have, or tell me I'm crazy because I keep buying the DC TV shows without actually watching them. I'm going to get to them eventually. One day when I don't have all this other stuff to watch. Yeah, right. Uh, the next one should be July, August, September, and September should be pretty packed uh, from what I'm hearing. Um, you know, it might be long Halloween, might be some Star Trek, so it should be pretty exciting regardless. And also stay tuned for future disc discussions by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell, because there definitely will be those in between. It's not just going to be the haul videos. I've got a couple cooking up in my brain, and I might just be waiting for some stuff to come out to kind of tackle those. But we'll see what happens. I do love talking about home media, and because it is kind of a crazy, weird little world of things. And I want to keep the spirit alive, because streaming and digital can be convenient, but the only way to know that you have Ultraman Mabius is when it's right in your hand right? So when it comes down to it, that's just what I love about home media. It's like having all my favorite things in front of me. And sometimes that does make me do crazy things like buy all the DC TV shows because I started it and by golly, I'm going to finish. 
Um, and that's just how it does. But that's it for this video. Check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for hero news and more. My awesome graphic designer on Twitter at darkclaw 643 And until next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.